Hey, I'm Chris from EA Ski and Snowboard and I'm here to talk to you guys today about equipment that you are going to need for one of our ski and snowboard training programs this winter. Depending on which resort that you're going to, there may be special deals available to you either locally in the resort or within the orientation city that you're visiting prior to the course. If you're unsure about these deals or what might be on offer, just speak to your training consultant. Some of our resorts do require you to have equipment prior to traveling out as well, uh, whereas some of them you are able to purchase equipment when you get there. So there's a few options there on the table. Just make sure you check with us so you know exactly what you need before you head out to the resort. All right, so let's talk about snowboards. There's a few things that we want to cover to help you pick the right snowboard for when you're coming out in the winter season. So today we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the length of your snowboard. We're going to talk about the camber of the snowboard and the shape of the snowboard, and also the type of snowboard that you're looking to buy. So lengthwise, you want to be looking for something that is around about up to your chin or maybe just a tiny fraction below your chin. That gives you just a rough idea, but it's also based on weight, so if you're not sure, have a chat with somebody, a good retailer will be able to point you in the right direction. Anything that's too long for you, and it's going to feel like an oil tanker, it's going to be very difficult to maneuver around and difficult to make quicker movements. Anything that's too small, and you're going to have that maneuverability, but as soon as you get into that really tough, tricky terrain, it's just going to get bumped around all over the place, it's not going to help you absorb and manage that terrain. So the length can be really, really important. And like I said, it needs to be based on your weight and your height. All right, the next thing that we want to think about is camber. So there's quite a few different types of camber on the market. For example, a regular camber snowboard, rocker snowboard, flat camber snowboard, or hybrid snowboard. For an instructor training program, a regular camber snowboard is just your classic, you know, works in every situation option you know it's going to be a solid, uh, reliable snowboard and that is the classic shape, it's how snowboards originated and it's uh, what the shape a lot of skis are as well. So a regular camber snowboard means that if you were to lay the snowboard flat on the ground, the tip and tail of the snowboard are touching the ground and the middle of the snowboard is just slightly raised off the ground. You can also have a flat camber snowboard which is just the base is completely flat, that's also a pretty good option. And you can get some hybrid camber snowboards as well, which uh, tie together regular camber and also a little bit of rocker camber where it goes back the other way at different parts of the snowboard just to help you do different things. They can be really good too. The one that you kind of want to avoid is a full rocker snowboard, which is touching the ground in the middle on the base of the snowboard and then rises up so the tip and tail of the snowboard are off the ground if you were to lay it flat. Those snowboards just, they don't quite give you the versatility, especially to do some of the higher performance tasks if you're thinking about heading towards your level two exam. Next up, let's just have a quick look at bindings. Uh, these bindings here, these are a Burton Cartel binding, a very, very solid binding that'll do everything you need it to do. With bindings, you want to get something that really fits your boot shape, that's the most important thing. So buying uh, boots and bindings together can be quite a good idea for that reason. With your bindings, uh, I think it's always best to go for your classic two-strap system. There's some kind of quicker entry systems available on the market, for example, such as flow bindings, but they can restrict you in some ways in, in, in some forms of movement. So I would always recommend going for the classic two-strap type option. When you're thinking about what type of bindings to buy, you can get some bindings on the market that are really, really stiff. Generally, the more expensive the bindings are, as a general rule, not always the case, but as a general rule, the more expensive the bindings are, the stiffer they'll be. So you can really avoid anything at the very, very highest end of the price bracket. They're just gonna be a little bit too stiff uh, for what you wanna do as an instructor. Equally, anything down at the very bottom end, the quality uh, of the materials and the binding, they're just not gonna be built to last. As an instructor, your bindings get you know, a fair bit of wear and tear, so you want something that's fairly sturdy. And lastly, let's talk about boots. Boots are obviously the, you know, one of the most important things you can have in terms of your equipment because they're what connects you to the snowboard and to the ground below you. What I'd recommend with boots is going for a good fitting snowboard boot above everything else. As a general rule, I will generally look for a boot where I can feel my big toe touching the end of the boot or touching the liner in the boot so I know that it's a good size and shape for me. But if I can feel my toe touching the hard plastic outer shell at the end of the boot, I know that's gonna be a little bit 
bit too tight. But don't be afraid to go something that is nice and compact around your foot because remember that it will expand. In terms of stiffness, you want to go for something that is again similar to your bindings, a kind of medium or medium to slightly stiffer end maybe, but medium is generally a pretty good uh, place to go with your boots. If you go again too stiff, it can feel a bit awkward, it feel a bit difficult to manoeuvre, especially with some of those lower end demos that you'll be expected to do within your instructor training and within your exam. If you go too soft, when you're free riding in your own time, it's not going to give you that support that you want. So something in the middle, stiffness wise, is going to be a good place to go.